and I love it. You know what I'm saying. But I hope you enjoy the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave them down below. I love, love to read your guys' feedback. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more in the future. I would appreciate it so much. And until next time, guys, bye. To start off, we're just going to use a light gray shadow. This is actually from the Balm's Meat Matte Nude Palette. And we're just going to work that above the crease. This is Sigma's E40 brush, I believe. And it's one of my favorites right now. It's just so perfect for blending eyeshadow. And we're just going to lightly put that in the crease. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is a smoky eye, so it can be messily put in there. No biggie, no biggie. And then our next step is to take a darker gray shadow. This is also from the Meat Matte Nude Palette. And we're going to work this with the same brush in the outer corner. And we're just going to blend, blend, blend all over the outer third of the lid. I just like to do this because it gives a little bit more depth and a little bit more drama to the look. And again, I'm doing it messy because it looks better that way. Now we're taking Max Eyeshadow in Sketch and we're just using a flat brush to apply this to the lid area and we're just going to kind of blend it together with the crease colors and this is really going to bring in the purple tones to go with the lipsticks that we're using today and also for my foundation and powder I use Revlon Color Stay in 200 Nude and Rimmel's Powder in Translucent, the Stay Matte Powder. And for the blush, I use NARS Luster. And for my eyebrows, I use Max Fluid Line in Dip Down. So once we got all the color packed on, we're going to go back with our E40 brush, and we're just going to blend it all out with no additional product, just to make it more uh, flawless, just so there's no harsh edges. Now taking a big fluffy brush and a very light shade, again this is from the Meat Matte Nude Palette, we're going to just go on the outer edge and help blend it out even more. Now for the highlight, take any white highlight and you just apply it with a flat brush under your brow bone. And this brush is actually from the art store and it works perfect. This is Anastasia's eyeliner in Mior, and you're just going to run this on your water, your bottom waterline and your lash line all over the place. We're going to blend it out too, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. It's so disgusting watching someone put eyeliner on, but we all do it, so whatever. Now with a flat shader brush. This is like a mini one from the art store too. The art store has great brushes, so if you have never checked it out, you should go check it out. So just blend out the black liner all over your lash line. Now we're on to Wet n Wild's liquid eyeliner. And we're gonna do a pretty pretty normal wing. Nothing too dramatic, but it's not gonna be a standard line. I love this liquid liner for applying wings. It makes it so much easier to do. And the wing looks messy right now, but it will eventually all come together once you finish putting it all on. And wings just take a lot, a lot of practice. So just don't give up. And just continue to work it on into the perfect line for your eye shape. And if you make a mistake, you can always go back with concealer and fix it up. And now apply a couple coats of mascara. This is just a random, I forgot what mascara it is, but it's like the first mascara anyone ever uses. 
I think it's Cover Girl or Maybelline in the pink and green tube. It will be listed below, but I feel like this is the mascara everyone always starts out with. But it's pretty good. I don't have bad things to say about it. And don't forget your bottom lashes. And now for falsies, we're going to use Red Cherry's lashes in number 413. And these are pretty, they're not too thick, but they give you extra, extra volume, which I really like. And length, they're, they're really long. And here's the finished eye look. It's just a really purple, nice, gray, smoky look. And you can see the glue is still drying, but once it dries, you'll be all finished with the eyes. Now it's time for the star of the show, or the face, I should say. This is Lime Crimes Lipstick in Chinchilla. And it's just a purple color, but it has a major gray undertone to it. You can't really tell until it's on your lips. See, it looks pretty purple there. Once you put it on your lips, it is so gray. So, we shall put it on now. Wow, it's really creamy. This is the first Lime Crime lipstick I've ever put on. Oh my gosh, they glide on so easily. So there it is. Do you see how gray it is? It doesn't make my teeth look yellow. I haven't got any Lime Crime lipsticks because I'm trying to cut down on my lipsticks because I practically have every color in the freaking book. But this color is so unique and it's so perfect for fall to mix it up because yeah, we have the berries, we have the deep plums, the dark colors. But how about this gray purple color? It's just so different. And again, this is Lime Crime's Chinchilla. And plus, chinchillas are my favorite, so just saying, I had to pick it up. <laughs> okay, so if chinchilla is not your style or what you fancy, I also picked up Poison Berry from Lime Crime. And this is just a standard, you know, fall color, a normal fall color. It's a deep purple, but it has a lot of sheen to it, so that makes it a little bit more unique, a little different. So this would also go perfect with this gray purple smoky eye because, come on, purple and purple. Okay, so there's Poison Berry. And I have to say, I don't know which one I like better so far. Chinchilla is way more unique and makes you stand out way more. But Poison Berry is a perfect color for fall. So I'm definitely going to be wearing these this season. This is really pretty. So, there you go. There's two different options to pair with a purple gray smoky eye. Lime Crimes lipstick in Chinchilla or Lime Crimes lipstick in Poison Berry. And I think that's it. Mm. See you later, guys.